God bless you, global Christian friends and uh, friends of other aspirations. We are in the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation, and we are going to just tear right into that sixth verse again because of what it says. Now pay attention around the globe. <clears throat> Looking at a, the voice of a great multitude, combine that with the voice of many waters. And combine those with the voice of mighty thunderings. Now, the collection of these three great voices is no doubt far greater than the human ear can hear or the human intellect can interpret. Yet, they are being interpreted. You can interpret this with an earthly mind. It is impossible to interpret these three voices. I don't care if you put them into a computer schematogram and try to interpret them. They are not going to surface in the proper sense with your super computers linked together because these are beyond the scope of the capacity of the electrical forces and the magnetic forces that are presently around uh, the earth and uh, the heavens. And it is difficult to interpret these mighty voices, these three great and mighty voices that says, Hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, the closest thing that you can get to that is when the mystery of God come to an end. And we will probably just go there and read what it says there. Uh, praise the Lord. It says there in the 15th verse of chapter 11, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven. You notice that? Great voices in heaven, saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now think about that statement that great voices were heard in heaven during the time that the mystery of God came to an end. And here we have uh, great voices, and they're saying, uh, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, God omnipotent, most excellent most exalted, most majestic. In other words, you're not going to go beyond this God, period. You cannot go beyond the 
omnipotence of this God that has this kind of voice power. Having this kind of voice power and the power of these great voices to be able to identify him uh, and to uh, say, uh, first of all, you must know what it means to interpret uh, uh, these three great voices. Uh, a great multitude, the voice of uh, many waters and the voice of mighty thunders. I can tell you, quite frankly speaking, if these things were to occur anywhere in the earth environment, I think the inhabitants of the earth would try to leave the planet Earth without a spacecraft. All right? But here we see uh, the Lord God omnipotent. So now, it does not matter what other kind of God there may be. This is the omnipotent God that has these three great voices identifying him and saying who he is and recognizing him for his majesticism on high in heaven. So basically, I don't mean no harm, but other gods don't mean nothing. Uh, I mean, I think that you can agree with that. That other gods don't mean nothing. Not according to these three voices. They have identified him as the omnipotent God. Which means what? He is the only one that they are going to recognize. <laughs> All right? He is the only one and his omnipotence only that they are going to recognize. Period. There's nothing beyond that. They said he is omnipotent, and I don't mean no harm, but if I were those other gods, I would try to dismantle myself. I would try to get out of the way of his omnipotence as quickly as possible because uh, he proved himself that he is omnipotent by what identified him as being omnipotent. Voice of a great multitude, the voice of many waters, the voice of mighty thunderings. Think about that statement. Mighty, this, this combination of voices is far beyond anything that you could ever hope to sustain. I mean, they will just consume you with their power. God bless you, global Christian friends. We hope that you are enjoying these things as much as the bishop is bringing them to you worldwide. God bless you and amen.